Hi, welcome to episode 310 of the Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter, and I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop where I sell my hand spun yarns and patterns. That's called the Corner of Knit and Tea. My patterns are also available on Ravelry and on Lovecrafts. I hope that you are doing well. It is Monday, December 28th, and we are super close to the end of the year. I hope that you are having a lovely week um, and that if you celebrated holidays in the past week or so that you enjoyed them. We uh, went to my in-laws. It is just the two of them and they have been isolating and they are about two hours away from us. So we uh, went over to their house on Wednesday and spent Christmas Eve and Christmas with them and then came home on Saturday. We didn't go anywhere. We didn't do anything. We ate lots of good food and watched TV and I had underestimated how wonderful it was to be in a place that's not that wasn't our home for just a couple days. It was actually a really really nice refresher. Um, we didn't even really exchange presents. We just ate candy and um, cooked some meals and played some board games and as I said watched movies and it was just a really nice time. I got lots of crafting done um, and it was an opportunity to sort of walk away from work and email and all kinds of things and just um, kind of unplug for a few days. And particularly in this year where we really haven't gone anywhere and haven't done anything, um, it was sort of an unexpected pleasure. We did come home on Saturday. We did our laundry and chores and my husband and I are working a little bit this week. Um, of course, Thursday is New Year's Eve and Friday is New Year's Day. We both have New Year's Day off and I may or may not take New Year's Eve off. So I have a couple working days um, and I am using them to try and get ahead on uh, stuff for the start of the year. But it's nice, it's pretty slow. We're just kind of hanging out. So I hope that if you were able to celebrate, you were able to find a few quiet moments for yourself. I know many people were without their families. Um, I am lucky in the sense that my in-laws are not terribly far away. I have not seen my own family, um, my parents or my sister or the kids, um, my niece and nephew since last Thanksgiving. So um, I definitely understand what it is like being apart. Um, but I hope that you were able to find a few moments of peace or maybe a dish, some food that brought you comfort or some crafting um, and that you were able to enjoy the holidays, albeit in a much quieter way this year. So I have lots to show you. I am recording earlier in the day than normal or than I have in the last few weeks. It's about 2.30. I am going to record. I'm going to run a package to a FedEx drop box and then I'm going to come back and work a little bit more. Um, I have holiday cards to send out. Mine were a little delayed, so they're going to be more like New Year's cards. So that is my plan for this afternoon and evening to address those. Um, and in general, I have crafty projects I'd like to finish and new things I'd like to start. So let's talk. Today I am drinking um, hot tea in my new mug. This was a um, stocking gift from my mother-in-law. It says Uyve all day, um, which is amusing. And um, inside it says coffee and nosh. But today I am drinking tea. I am drinking a blend from Adagio of their masala chai and almond oolong. It was a fandom related blend um, and I had it just in a little baggie. It's a black bag from a friend so um, I don't have it to show for you. This is finishing it off. Um, I came home with a renewed interest in drinking lots of tea and coffee. My um, mother-in-law has a Keurig and it makes it so easy. Um, but I have a new mug and a new year and I just want to drink warm drinks and stay cozy inside. So how has the weather been for you? Um, we actually had unseasonably warm days the last several days. It's been in the 50s for the last several days, including Christmas. Um, so it has not been super chilly at all, although that is about to change. We are expected to get snow on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, maybe. Um, and the temperature is supposed to drop quite a bit. So um, we missed Christmas by a week, but it might be a white New Year's. So. The big thing that I did over the holidays was I decided to go back to hat knitting. And as you know, over Thanksgiving, I pulled together a whole bunch of, oops, I dropped one, hang on just a second. 
as you know, over Thanksgiving, I pulled together a variety of um, yarns, DK and worsted weight that were superwash and knit a whole bunch of hats for charity. And I really had so much fun. They were absolutely addictive. Um, I'm knitting them as child sizes, so approximately 80 stitches on size eight needles um, and using sixes for the brim. Um, I'm more or less using the barley pattern as a guide um, in terms of how long to knit before I start the decreases, but in general I am doing just plain um, two by two rib on the brim and then stockinette for the hat and then um, pom poms for all of them. And I had a great time. I did nine hats over um, the nine days of sort of Thanksgiving and the weekends um, and I absolutely loved it and I had put aside more yarn um, and so I took that with me as one of the projects that I worked on uh, over uh, Christmas break and so I have a bunch of new hats to show for it. So um, this is the first one. This one was actually um, an 88 stitch hat. I did a couple bigger and a couple smaller um, depending on the yarns and the needles. Um, the purple is left over from my friend Christine who is Treasure Goddess Yarns and it's Treasured Warmth Worsted in the uh, Song of the Sirens colorway and this was a, the variegated is a skein that I got I believe from um, I think it was pigeon roof yarns pigeon roof fibers and um she had just a couple skeins that she put up on instagram that were kind of an unspecified um superwash wool base and um it's not as soft as her usual yarns it was definitely something different and i had the leftovers of a skein i believe i made something for roxy in this and i had about half the skein left and so i went ahead and did a hat and then I had some orange and gray, and the gray is also um, Treasure Goddess, Treasured Warmth Worsted, and I don't remember, oh, the orange was a squoosh. It was a fun colorway that I believe I got from Eat Sleep Knit, and so I have the gray and orange, and it's got these pops of red in it. It's real fun, and I used up all the orange for that, so that was very exciting to use up everything in my stash. Um, the next one, this is also some Song of the Sirens. I had a little bit more of it. And then this is a uh, uh, brown sheep um, stratosphere, in um, which is their uh, superwash DK. Um, and I don't remember what the colorway is, but it's kind of a red and purple. And so I thought it would go okay with the top and bottom. I wish I'd done something a little more contrasty, but I think it will be okay. And then the pom-pom actually has both yarns in it because when I got to the end, I had a little bit left of both. This one is one of my favorites. This one is actually a little bit smaller. I did this on fours and sixes because the yarn was all DK. Um, the gray is Stylecraft, Stylecraft DK. It's what I have been using on all of the uh, Woodland Crochet blankets that I've done this year. And the um, rainbow is a little bit of DK left over from White Birch Fiber Arts. Um, it was a hat that I made for Miles years and years ago. And I just found this little, vast little bit that was all of it um, and I have a little bit of red from something else I think it was um, gosh I don't remember I think it was also stratosphere from brown sheep and so it just it was a cheerful little rainbow hat that was just perfect um, some of you may recognize this one. This is the, um, this is some gray that I had from Zen Yarn Garden. It was left over from a sweater that I knit for them. And the hat itself is the two with by hand yarns. I knit a hat for, um, myself, for myself out of this yarn just a few weeks ago and added the, um, turquoise pom-pom. And this is the leftover. It's called Lady Pilot. And, um, it was just, uh, I, I had less than half a skein left. So it was perfect for a kid hat and then a gray pom-pom. And then I had just a little bit left of that pigeon roof and so I added it to this and the teal is also um, some Zen Yarn Garden um, in their worsted weight that I had left over from when I knit a um, night shift for them. I get to keep my leftovers when I knit for them so I have all the little partial skeins and so I finished that off with a pom-pom with both colors. And I am currently working on one more. I have enough yarn pulled aside for I think one or two more hats and then I will have to go scavenging again. So that may conclude this round of hat knitting. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is seven. So I may do another one or two more and then I may just call it quits for now. Um, mostly I just wanted to knit a stack of hats. So I used up some scraps, um, got some things out of the stash, cleaned some stuff um, and went ahead and uh, 
had a few hats to donate when they are taking donations again. So I believe they're done taking donations for this year, but I figured I would just put them in a bag and hold on to them. And if I hear of a worthy cause in the next month or two, I'll send them off. Otherwise, I will hold them for next year. Um, so the final hat is this last little bit of Lady Pilot, and I have a little bit left for the pom-pom, and I am using a teal yarn. This is um, Cloudborn Fibers. It is a DK um, super wash, and I used it to knit my uh, sister a sweater, uh, I think last year, and I have several little balls left over, so I um, have plenty to sort of finish this hat. So I'm in the middle of this one. I will finish this one tonight. That will make seven, and then I have um, a few other leftovers I think I could turn into hats. I do have some fingering weight that I could double for hats, um, and so I just have to see how much more I want to do um, before I cast on for some new projects, but this was definitely the perfect holiday knit. Um, you these are like potato chip knitting to me. I can't knit just one. Um, and I feel like I will from now on start putting all of my leftover scraps places that I can do this. Um, I do actually also have a big bag of scraps of things that are not superwash. So I have been trying to do superwash and or acrylic for all the kids stuff because I feel like um, anything you give to a kid is going to get thrown in a washing machine or may not get taken care of, you know, like knit goods. Um, but what I haven't decided is if I'm going to go ahead and use some of my real wool to um, make some other things to donate either to some local shelters or um, whatnot. I just haven't decided exactly what to do with it. Um, all of it is it's leftovers like Cascade 220 and Peyton's and um, a few other things. So the real issue is just that if you throw it in the washing machine in the dryer, it will felt. Um, but it's still good yarn and I think it would make warm winter accessories. So I still may use it. I probably just won't use it to give to the kids because I wouldn't want anyone to be super disappointed. Um, I feel like I could knit hats maybe for some of the homeless shelters and it would be fine. Don't know how often they wash things, but I do know that wool will keep them warm during the winter. So finish up this hat and see what's next. I may have a couple more to show you next week. I may not. We'll see. Um, but that has been kind of a fun weekly project. The second thing I want to show you is something that I actually showed you last week. And I said I wouldn't bring it back unless I had a bunch more done. And um, I have a bunch more done. So I actually took the um, Karen Big Cakes with me, the, the big um, gradient cake of yarn that I was using to knit a charity blanket. And um, I said I would bring it back when I did a bunch and um, I'm almost finished with that skein. So this is the first Karen Big Cake and I worked on this in the car on the way there and then I worked on this when I ran out of material for hats. <laughs> um, and so I basically knit almost the entire um, gradient. I just had a very little bit, a couple more colors. So this is all that's left of that big gradient cake. I went ahead and ordered a second because I think I'm going to want a second. Um, this blanket is not going to end up squared no matter how I make it try to, but um, I think it will still be a good baby blanket and then I will do something around the outer edge as a border in I have a hot pink, a kind of paler pink, and then I also have a peachy color. And I haven't decided which one I'm going to do yet. But um, so this is um, back into the box next to my desk and will stay there just sort of as a um, phone call, Zoom call, um, whatnot. And I won't bring, I really won't bring it back unless I make significant progress on it. And I don't plan to. Um, it was just one of those things when we left on Wednesday, we left at about 4.30 and it was getting dark and I wanted something that I could knit in the car even in the dark um, and a garter stitch blanket was perfect for that. Um, and then I actually um, ran out of, I had to come home to get more, I think I knit five hats while we were away and I had to come home to get more um, scraps because I didn't take that many with me. Um, so when I ran out of hats to knit, I turned to working on this one. Um, the only project that I took with me that I did not finish um, is I, or actually even cast on, was I took some hand spun yarn to cast on some Christmas socks um, for a Christmas Eve cast on with um, little bobbins knits. And to be honest, I wasn't feeling it, so I didn't. So that's the only thing I didn't do. Once I came back home, however, I picked up a project that I have um, here at home and started working on the color work. This is my plume poncho, and this is a poncho from Rowan Yarns. This is just sort of a refresher on what it will look like. Um, I am knitting mine in a blue and a very pale gray. The blue is called Maritime. It's kind of a navy, um, and then I have a real pale um, cloudy gray. 
and I started the color work yesterday. I didn't get as far as I would like, but that is because um, currently, so the um, poncho is knit from the bottom up, which means you cast on an enormous number of stitchers and then you are working and decreasing as you go. And um, I didn't have any decreases in the portion of the chart that I knit yesterday, um, so I am still at about 360 stitches, so that is color work in the round, and I got about seven rows, seven rounds done yesterday. I was hoping for 10, but I just didn't quite make it. So I will continue to work on that this week. I'm hoping that I can finish it this week um, before I kind of finish out this year um, and finish the project. I don't know that I'll finish it by the first, but if I can finish it um, even by the end of the weekend, which would be the third, I'm completely okay with that. So as I said, I started the color work. You can see just a little bit. This is kind of the tip of the feather at the bottom, and um, that is the gray and blue. So I'm really excited about this. Um, I found out, I learned some interesting things while working on this. Um, and I also learned this as part of when I was trying to do um, the um, descent collar uh, sweater for Nanny Swaymo. What I think I have decided is that although I enjoy color work, um, although I love wearing and find color work yokes amazingly attractive, um, I actually do not enjoy knitting them that much. And the reason that I do not enjoy knitting color work yokes so much is for a couple reasons. One is that I always find that I have a lot of stitches on the needle, and so um, it's just really cumbersome to keep going round and round, and each color work round takes a really long time. Um, but by far the, um, well, and this is sort of part and parcel of the same thing, by far the um, more difficult thing that I really don't enjoy about color work yokes is that some sections um, there are really long floats or you have to catch your floats and I find that it is really hard to maintain tension. So if you look at the motif, at the very bottom of this motif, you have one gray stitch and then a huge expanse of blue stitches. Um, I'm not going to give away the exact count, but let's just say you have one gray stitch and uh, umpteen um, blue stitches, somewhere in the teens. And so that is a long length to carry your yarn. And I had experiment with a variety of things that you can see on the longest section. I actually caught my floats um, and then I started experimenting with slightly longer floats. In general, usually when I'm knitting color work, I don't let my floats go longer than five stitches. Um, that is where the floats are where you carry the yarn in back until you are ready to use it again for um, those of you who are new to color work. Um, and as you can see down at the bottom, I cut the floats every so often. Then on the next row, I think I let it go seven or eight stitches. Um, and my problem is that when I have so many stitches on the needle um, for a yoke, and then I am also trying to leave my floats loose, but not too loose. And um, I am concerned sometimes that when you catch your floats in there, sometimes if it's a light color, they'll show through to the front. I don't think they really do here. Um, but in general, I just um, don't enjoy the process of managing all of that and worrying about whether it's going to lay flat or whether it's going to pucker. And despite the fact that I have quite a bit of color work experience, um, I... <sighs> something about knitting in these larger, um, these larger garments in the round really just doesn't appeal to me. I have no problem doing color work on mittens or hats or someplace where I can basically have the length of the circular needle be the length of the stitches and I don't have to worry about scooching stitches all around and I can just kind of go round and round. Um, and I think that as I decrease stitches and as, um, the color work comes, becomes more pronounced, like where there's less space in between the motifs and there's a lot more interplay between the colors. Um, the shorter the uh, sections between the color switches, the better I do. So by the time I get up further and I'm looking at like three gray and two blue and three gray and two blue and four gray and one blue and those kinds of things where I'm kind of interchanging more frequently, I find it easier to maintain tension during those sections than I do during these long sections. So um, I think what I found is that I enjoy wearing color work, but I don't necessarily enjoy knitting it. And so that will be something to um, either work on or take with me into the new year and sort of revise my goal setting based on those things. So um, yeah, so that's where I'm at with this one. And hopefully by the next time I speak to you, which will be in the new year, I will be able to um, show you a finished object. 
So that is what I'm working on. Again, that is Plume. It was from the Rowan catalog. I am using Rowan Alpaca Soft DK in Maritime or Marine. And then I don't remember what the, um, I don't think the colorway is on the gray. So I can't tell you. It's something like cloudy day or silver or cloud. It's a real, real pale gray. And um, I'm excited to have this and wear it, if not all the little bits of knitting it. So um, that kind of, um, I guess, wraps up what I wanted to show you. I actually had two other things to show you. The first, um, I forgot to bring it. It is the hand spun that I was working on last week. Um, I did apply that and I will be taking photos and it will go up in my shop. Um, probably by the time this airs, it will already be up in my shop and on my Instagram. Um, that was Cloudy Skies. It was blues and greens and whites and it was a merino and tussa silk. Um, and that was from Hello Yarn. I have also started spinning the next, um, uh, fiber, which is, um, it was a 70s merino and the colorway was called Bitter Roots and Organic Fruits and it is mostly reds um, but also some purples and blues. It is very um, fall toned and it is also from Hello Yarn and that one I meant to bring you and I cannot find the second half of the fiber. <laughs> I broke the fiber in half. I spun half of it last night and then I had a big ball of fiber that I wound up so that I could work on it when I next sat down at the wheel and it has disappeared. And I do not understand because it is, I'm still in my craft room and it still should be here and I will find it this week, I am sure. I am sure I tucked it someplace incredibly safe and I have no idea where that is. So, the only other thing I thought I would talk to you about is I've started to think about what my cast-ons in the new year will be. And I really, really want to cast on a sweater, and I hadn't decided what I want to cast on yet. Um, I have a few fingering, uh, fingering yarn quanti sweater quantities, one of which was the um, Barrett Wilco that I ordered for uh, to do my Nanny Swaymo and ended up not doing it. But I decided I do have um, a sweater pack with a specific sweater in mind, and I think it would be a nice thing to do in January while it's really cold and I would like a warm sweater. So you may remember a while back I knit the Comfort Fade cardigan for Zen Yarn Garden, and I knit a sample for them um, in the extra large size, and um, that was before I was um, charging for my samples, and so in those days I was mostly knitting in exchange for yarn. And so basically the deal was that I knit them a um, comfort fade cardigan and they uh, sent me my choice of a fade for my own comfort fade cardigan. So I have all the yarn here, it just needs to be wound. And um, if you remember that one that I did, I did a white, a silver, a red, and a black. And so I decided, um, I'm sorry, a white, a silver, a silver and red, and then a black. And I wanted mine to be a little bit different, so I asked for the silver and the multi, which is kind of a red over-dyed over silver, and then I asked for another color to bridge the black, and they dyed for me my own color. I don't know, they actually didn't even um, call it, they called it color three, um, and it is a red with an over-dyed black wash, and then um, I have the black, which is mid -dyed. So these are my colors for my Comfort Fade cardigan, and I think I'm gonna wind these up and get started right away. This is Zen Yarn Garden Superfine DK, which is their 100% Superfine Superwash Merino, um, and it is super squishy and delightful, and I have enough to do my sweater the way I want to do it. So I think I'm going to cast that on, maybe have a winding party and cast on next weekend. So I will bring that to show you. Um, I don't know that I'll have much done, but I will be bringing that to show you in the next couple weeks. I also have a sample that I will be casting on that will also be part of the winding party this coming weekend, um, and so I will bring that to show you next week. And I also have one other small project that I think I'm gonna work on, and I will bring that to show you next week. That should just be a one-week project. It should be kind of instant gratification, which, as you know, I'm all about between projects, um, and I'm excited about it, so I will bring that next week to show you. Um, so I think that's it. I know this one was a short one. As I said, I hope that you have enjoyed your holidays as much as you can. Um, I hope that the end of the year um, means good things for you. I am very much hoping for a brighter 2021 for us all. 
Um, and so I will say I wish you all the best in the new year um, for your you, your family, your friends, um, a happy, healthy, prosperous new year. Um, and may 2021 be brighter for all of us. Uh, until I see you again, happy new year, my friends. And I will say, as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.